Hello, good morning. So today my plan was to do some research on the LBRY cryptocurrency and content network. Um, so I've got the web page open here, lbry.com. Um, okay. Um, so they say right at the top, LBRY does to publishing what Bitcoin did to money. Um, and I think it's a good way to describe how LBRY works. Um, so my understanding is that what the creators of LBRY did is they forked the Bitcoin blockchain. And then um, instead of um, having transaction data on the Bitcoin blockchain, they had links to content on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so if you want to publish on LBRY, you create a private key the same way you would with Bitcoin or some other uh, cryptocurrency, and then you send a message to the big, to the LBRY blockchain, similar to the way you send a transaction transaction message in Bitcoin, and then um, um, you would publish the metadata about your content. So, say you're publishing a video, you'd publish the title on the blockchain, maybe like some tags, publish date, some other metadata. And then you post a peer-to-peer -peer link, similar to like a BitTorrent magnet link, on the blockchain itself. Um, and so the, you obviously can't host like 10 gigabyte video files on a blockchain, but you can host these magnet links. And then as long as someone out there has a copy of that video, you can do like a BitTorrent-like peer-to-peer uh, -peer file, file download to get um, the, the content. Um, now, LBRY, I think now is primarily used for video, um, but it supports all sorts of content types. So I think you can do images, text, um, you know, whatever. Um, and then the central node of the LBRY network is odyssey.com. Um, so odyssey.com is a web interface to essentially interact with the LBRY blockchain. Um, it's essentially like a drop-in replacement for like a YouTube or something like that. Um, so you can just sign up like you would on any other account. They manage the private wallet for you. And then you can interact with the LBRY blockchain. Um, and they were recently sued, uh, which I have this open in another tab. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, and then I also want to do some looking at the like code and uh, technical aspects of LBRY. I looked about a year ago and found it kind of very unwieldy and difficult to use. Um, but uh, some things also seem pretty well done. So um, let's just read through these then. Um, so you can download, they have like a desktop app. Um, so similar to how you could like, for Bitcoin, you could, Odyssey would be the equivalent of like Coinbase, um, like it's just kind of a normal website you can use to interact with the decentralized system. And then the Linux desktop app for LBRY would be the equivalent of like downloading a Linux desktop Bitcoin wallet. Um, I believe I tried this website earlier and it was dead. Um, yeah. Um, oh, interesting. I tried to join this Discord and it was also kind of empty. Um, I think thing. Oh well, this is dead. Um, I think this is a really good idea. Um, so, Odyssey.com is known for kind of being a like free 
free speech extremist type website, um, which is which is good. But um, the um, I think the ideal use of something like this is you have this blockchain that has the like network effects of um, ho hosting all of this content, and then people make like these highly cur curated like websites that then access it. Um, because I think the big thing that a blockchain is useful for here is kind of getting over the network effects for content publishing. Um, so network effect is kind of like a winner takes, it, it kind of creates like a winner takes all dynamic. Um, so if you're like a consumer of like video content, like a YouTube type thing, the value of some content network to you is proportional to the amount of content that's available there. So you can find more niche things, things that interest you. Um, but, and then if you're a content uh, producer, the value of a content network is proportional to uh, the number of users consuming content on that network. And so there's kind of a po uh, positive feedback loop here where kind of someone starts to win and so they win more so they win more, so they win more. And that's how you get this like winner take all, winner take most dynamic. Um, but what a public blockchain could do here is you have this public, um, you have this public registry of content and then anyone can make their own view into it. So if you're some startup trying to compete with YouTube, you can start day one with 100,000 videos available on your website. Um, not because people uploaded them to your website specifically, but because they uploaded it to this broader public network that's available to everyone, and then you chose the ones that you wanted to kind of republish, um, and you don't have to like get over this really big network effect, which often means people need to raise like millions of dollars in venture capital, and it kind of reduces competition and makes things worse for everyone. Um, That's cool. Uh, so I may actually look at this later on stream. Uh, it's a Python library. Um, cool, cool. So my understanding is there's the LBRY Foundation, which is the kind of nonprofit thing that creates the blockchain. Um, and then there's the Odyssey Corporation, which I think has now been sued into bankruptcy by the SEC. Um, but I believe they are still around. Um, so I guess you can see who the uh, board of directors are. Um, Uh, LBRY is a blockchain based, oh, is it pronounced library? Interesting. The library is a blockchain based file sharing and pay payment network that powers decentralized platforms, primarily social networks and video platforms. 
LBRY creators also created Odyssey, an open source video sharing website that uses the network, which was split into a separate company on October 1st, 2021. Video platforms built on Odyssey, built on library, such as Odyssey, have been described as decentralized fringe alternatives to YouTube. Odyssey lightly moderates content based on community guidelines. Its website delists videos containing pornography and the promotion of violence and terrorism, although delisted videos remain available on the platform's blockchain data store. Um, yep. Oh, so it actually literally uses BitTorrent. I assumed it was kind of similar to BitTorrent, but that's, that's awesome. Um, I've actually got BitTorrent running right now. I'm seeding the uh, llama weights and the uh, mistral weights. Um, okay. What's with this weird formatting? Okay. Um, so I was going to try to find the actual case itself um, and talk about that. Um, um, so I can explain my understanding first, but I, I'd like to try to find the actual document because uh, I can maybe read it on stream. So um, the first thing to understand is how crypto is currently regulated in the U.S. Um, so the one of the big relevant enforcement agencies is the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the way... Uh, investing in equities works in the U.S. is um, there are, are pri there's kind of a distinction between private um, and public. So private, like if you just start a bakery with your own money, that would be like a private equity that you just own 100% of it. Um, and then there's also larger private equity um, that you generally need to be what's called a, uh, what's it called, uh, accredited investor. Um, which requires a net worth of, I think, like $2 million or something, uh, which is essentially just uh, to prevent normal people from getting scammed and, like, pitched uh, sham investments. Um, and then there's the public markets. And to publicly market a security and sell it to people, um, you need to register with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, and so... People have been trying to do this with crypto securities for a while, and um, essentially the SEC has refused to uh, register any crypto securities, but has prosecuted people for failing to register um, their securities. So it's kind of a catch-22 where uh, if you don't register, the SEC comes after you, but if you try to go to the SEC and register, it's also illegal or they just turn your application down. Um, like I think literally none have ever been approved uh, crypto securities. Um, so issuing a security uh, on a crypto network in the U.S. is, is kind of de facto illegal currently. Um, there's kind of been a push to get Congress to pass a law that would kind of provide clarity on this. Um, but until that happens, and as long as the SEC doesn't change its mind, um, issuing a security on a blockchain is effectively illegal in the U.S. Uh, the nuance here is there's a distinction between um, securities, which are regulated by the SEC, and commodities, which are re regulated by the CFTC, uh, which is the Com Commodities and Future Trading Commission, something like that. Um, and in general, commodities are much more lightly regulated 
and people that are working in the crypto space uh, generally want to have their token be viewed as a commodity, not a security, because the securities uh, 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 are violating the SEC's rules, um, but commodities are more loosely regulated. Um, I think this is partially because the CFTC in general is just kind of more open to crypto. Um, and I think there's kind of a regulatory turf, turf war where the CFTC and the SEC are kind of fighting each other over who has jurisdiction here. Um, it also just kind of makes sense that a commodity would be less tightly regulated than a security. Um, so kind of a security is something you normally use to fund some sort of business. So it's kind of like a big thing, like you raise capital and then you, I don't know, buy equipment or do whatever you're going to do. Um, whereas if you like grow cucumbers in your backyard and sell them to your neighbor, you're doing a commodities transaction. Um, so it kind of makes sense that it would be uh, more lightly regulated. Um, and so the uh, the relevant Supreme Court case here, um, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, um, but this kind of established where the line between a security and a commodity is. Um, and it was a case of a, I think it was an orange grove. So someone had wanted to create an orange grove. Um, so they raised money from investors and um, people gave them money in expectation of future profits. And then this guy, I guess, bought a bunch of orange trees, bought a tractor, bought land, whatever, and planted this orange grove. And the Supreme Court ruled that this is a security. Um, so uh, like an orange grove is kind of a standard for any sort of business. Um, so if you wanted to do a pecan grove, that would also be a secure, uh, a company that grows pecans um, or a company that does manufacturing. I think the language they use is it's a security if there's an expectation of profit based on the work of others. Um, so this would be kind of any sort of like equity investment, investing in a business. Um, Whereas commodities are more just kind of things that might have value. Um, so maybe an analogy for a commodity would be like a Chuck E. Cheese token. So um, for those of you who aren't American, Chuck E. Cheese is like a, uh, it's like a arcade and restaurant for kids. Um, so if you're a parent, you can go to Chuck E. Cheese and then you buy these tokens. You, you go to some machine, you put like a $20 bill in, and then you get a bunch of these like little metal tokens, um, like arcade tokens that you can use just within the, the restaurant. Um, and then you give them to your kids and they can like go play games and uh, buy pizza or whatever with these tokens. Um, and so crypto projects generally want to be viewed as doing something like that. So they don't want to be viewed as issuing a security, which is like giving people an equity investment in their business. Um, and they want to be more viewed as like creating some utility token that is just kind of useful within their network. Um, so Odyssey created a crypto token called LBR, or LBRY created the LBRY crypto token, um, which I think in general actually does fit this commodities um, definition um, because you can buy LBRY tokens and then you can use them to buy content on the LBRY network. You can donate to content creators on the LBRY network um, and things like that. So I would actually think they'd be in a pretty good space to be considered a commodity. Um, though what they did, and I think a lot of crypto projects have done, that I think does cross this legal line, is they... Like, imagine Chuck E. Cheese's, like issued tokens when they first started and it was just one restaurant and then it became successful and then they the tokens kind of like appreciated over time um, and so like by the time they had 10 restaurants the the token if you had bought a token and held on to it from the first restaurant it was 10 times as valuable um, and then like they kept growing and then the tokens become more and more valuable um, and maybe they issue them in smaller and smaller denominations that people can still like play the games or whatever um, but at this point, the token's kind of acting like you own stock in Chuck E. Cheese. Um, like the line kind of gets blurred here. And I believe this is what the SEC case was going after LBRY for. 
Um, because I believe they essentially sold tokens to investors, uh, which looks a whole lot like a securities transaction. Because um, why would the investors be buying these tokens if they weren't expecting to make money? Um, so I think they would have been fine if they just sold the tokens to users. Um, but I think they needed money to start the project, which is why people do securities transactions, um, but they're also illegal. Um, and uh, for my personal opinion on this, I think it should generally be possible um, to issue crypto securities in the U.S. Um, the current state of things, you essentially need to spend millions of dollars on accountants and investment bankers if you want to raise public capital in the U.S. Um, and I think this is kind of unfair and creates kind of like a rich get richer uh, type of situation where if you're a normal person, you can either like try to borrow money or like raise from raise money from friends and family, but you really have very few options for raising capital. Whereas if you're some like billionaire, you can just uh, issue stock on the public market, raise a ton of money, and then go do bigger um, things than a normal person would be able to do. And the crypto uh, technologically is totally able to handle securities transactions right now. Um, like if you wanted to issue $10 million of stock on Ethereum, the Ethereum fees are like $4 a transaction, which is cheaper than brokerage accounts were like five or 10 years ago. Um, and it's very secure. Um, the one issue is, I think if you let people issue crypto secur securities, there would be a ton, a ton of fraud. Um, so like, I think the good case of crypto securities would be like small people, like small businesses that previously had no small, but very legitimate businesses. Like, I don't know, a bakery or like a metalworking shop, um, with like five employees, something like this, um, that before would have had no access to public capital markets. They could totally just create an Ethereum wallet and then get access, um, through that. I think the bad side of this um, would be a lot of people would fall for ver all sorts of like scams and hustles and who knows what, like maybe Andrew Tate would issue a, a, a crypto security and tell all his followers they were going to get rich um, in some scam or like something like this, you know, um, or like people would create pyramid schemes and then they would say like, oh, this we have the super productive business, like you're going to get so rich, but then people actually lose their life savings. Um, and there's kind of been a similar discussion in the U.S. around the accredited investor rules. So, um, essentially, you can't invest in private equity unless you're an accredited investor. And to be an accredited investor, you need something like, I think it's like a net worth of $2 million or something, or an income of like 300 k or something, which is... Uh, not that high, but it's more than almost everyone has in the U.S. Um, like, you're pretty rich if you uh, pass either of those. Um, and so the thinking there is essentially, if you have that much money, you know what you're doing. And if you lose your money, you know too bad. Like, you should have known better. Um, and then essentially means that you can't just, like, be some salesman who's going around marketing securities to random people. Um, and... A lot of people have criticized this because it essentially, private equity has been one of the big wealth generating mechanisms over the last decade in the U.S. And it's essentially unavailable to normal people. Um, though I do kind of see where the government's coming from on this. Like, there would be a lot of scams if you repealed the uh, accredited investor rules. Um, and so I, I am kind of sympathetic for wanting to uh, put up some guardrails here. Um, but okay, so moving on. Uh, so I want to try to find the document of the, I don't know if it's been the indictment or the lawsuit. Um, oh, here it is, I think. Okay. So the link wasn't here. Oh, this is a different thing. Okay. So I'll try to do these chronologically so that we can read through them and it makes sense. March. 
Okay. So, SEC litigation release, LBRY Incorporated. SEC charges New Hampshire issuer of digital asset securities with registration violations. So this is what I was talking about earlier, um, how crypto securities are effectively illegal in the U.S. So the SEC, if you issue a crypto security without registering, the SEC will prosecute you. And then if you go to the F SEC and try to register, you will be denied. So it's effectively illegal. Um, okay, litigation release number 25060, March 29th, 2021. Securities and Exchange Commission versus LBRY Incorporated. Civil action number, whatever, filed March 29th, 2021. The Securities and Exchange Commission today charged the library, a blockchain company, with conducting, conducting an unregist unregistered offering of digital asset securities. So this is what I was talking about earlier that I think got them in trouble, is the issue is not actually the structure of the blockchain, but the fact that they did this offering of securities to investors. I haven't read this complaint though, so maybe, maybe I misunderstand the case and we'll find out in a second here. Um, okay, according to the SEC's complaint, from at least July 2016 to February 2021, Library, which offers a video sharing application, sold digital as asset securities called Library Credits to numerous investors, including investors based in the US. The complaint alleges that Library did not file a registration statement for the offering and that the offering failed to satisfy any exemption from registration. The complaint further alleges that by failing to file a registration statement, L Library denied prospective investors the information required for such an offering to the public. As alleged, Library received more than 11 million in US dollars, Bitcoin, and services from purchasers who participated in this offering. The SEC's complaint filed in the Federal District of, in New Hampshire charges library with violating the registration provision of Section 5A and 5C of the Securities Act of 1933. The SEC seeks permanent, permanent injunctive relief, disgorgement plus prejudgment interest, and civil penalties. The SEC's case is being handled by Peter Brian Moores, Sophia Hussein, Eric Forney, Mark Jones, and Amy Guazda of Boston Regional Office. Okay. United States District, District Court, District of New Hampshire. Uh, Securities and Exchange Commission versus Library Incorporated. Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission, the commission, alleges the following against defendant library. The case concerns library's failure to register an offering of securities pursuant to the Securities Act of 1933. From 2016 through present, library offered and sold millions of dollars worth of unregistered securities to investors in the form of a digital asset called Library Credits, LBC, which library told investor, investors was to be used to fund its business and build its product, a digital content marketplace or network offering video and audio recording, images, and other information. Um, so yeah, this is essentially what you're not allowed to do. Like this is, this would be like an equity security 101. You raise capital and then use it to build a business. Um, okay. LBC was offered and sold as investment contracts and therefore securities. Library offered and sold the LBC in exchange for US dollars, Bitcoin, and other consideration such as non-monetary contributions to its enterprise. This one's a little interesting. Um, so like, say in the Chuck E. Cheese case, you you ran this Chuck E. Cheese and there was some local guy that just like loved playing arcade games. And then you make him a deal where it's like, hey, you do an hour of dishwashing and we'll give you, you know, a thousand Chuck E. Cheese tokens. Um, so uh, this one, actually, I'm not sure if the SEC is in the right here legally, but um, though I guess maybe. maybe uh, LBRY pooled the money it raised such that the success or failure of the LBC holders was inextricably intertwined with the other holders of LBC, the largest of whom was LBRY itself. And LBC holders reasonably would have expected a return on their investment based on the entrepreneurial or managerial efforts of LBRY. Um, so yeah, I mean, this this sounds like it is what they did. Um, so they, 
they minted these crypto tokens and then they sold some and then you notice the language they use here LBC holders reasonably would have expected a return on their investment based on the entrepreneurial or managerial efforts of LBRY. So I think they're directly kind of referencing that Supreme Court case I was talking about with the Orange Grove. So I should pull up that. But it um, the the kind of key test, I think it's called the Howey test, um, um, about whether or not something is a security is based on whether the investors are expecting uh, to increase their money based on the effort of others. Um, so here we go. The Howey test is a legal test created by the U.S. Supreme Court to determine whether certain transactions qualify as investment contracts. If a transaction is found to be an investment contract, it is considered a security and subject to certain disclosures and registration requirements under the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. Um, yeah. Oh, interesting. So the case was like some, this SEC versus Howie was some, uh, some sort of, uh, like they did some weird like lease back lease agreement, but it essentially still functioned like a security. Um, okay, so here's the test: you're a security and red and uh, regulated by the SEC in the U.S. If one, it is an investment of money; two, there is an expectation of profit from the investment; three, the investment of money is in a common enterprise; and four, any profits come from the efforts of a promoter or third party. Um, so I would say LBRY probably did do this. Um, but I think if they had not, if the tokens on the library, LBRY network had no real expectation of appreciation, like they were just like a utility token that just kind of float around the network and you could exchange it for money, but you wouldn't like hold it to try to get it to appreciate, then, uh, then I think they would not have passed this test. Um, but it sounds like they sold the tokens to build their business, which then did pass this test. Um, so, okay. Beginning in mid-2016, Library offered and sold LBC to the public in exchange for contributions designed to allow Library to build the Library network. Similarly, to pay for Library's construction and development of the Library network, Library offered and sold LBC to investors. In particular, between 2016 and 2020, Library sold more than 13 million LBC to the general public through accounts that controlled at two online digital asset trading platforms. Library sold the LBC on the digital asset trading platforms in exchange for Bitcoin that valued, then valued at more than 5 million. Concurrently, Library offered LBC to institutional investors at a discount to the secondary market trading price. As early as July and August 2016, Library offered to sell LBC directly to institutional investors. The library did not consummate any sales of LBC to institutional investors at that time. Instead, it obtained investment funding from venture capitalists. From October 2017 through April 2018, library made multiple direct sales of LBC to a series of investment funds focused on digital assets. In total, the investment funds paid li library more than $250,000 for LBC from October 2017 through April 2018. In May 2018, Library agreed to sell 2 million LBC, then worth approximately $360,000 to an institutional investor rather than transferring Library to common stock, rather than transferring Library common stock to the investor. The terms of Library's sale to the institutional investor required the investor to wait one year before selling the 2 million LBC. Library used the capital it raised from sales of LBC to pay for the operational costs to grow the library network, which, is, which, as library publicly represented, would cause the price of LBC held by investors to appreciate. Because library was the largest holder of LBC, it, was ex it also expected to profit from any appreciation in value of LBC. At various times, library represented to venture capital investors 
that it projected the LBC that it held itself would eventually be worth billions of dollars once it had built the library network to its anticipated scale. Library did not register its offer of sale of LBC with the commission. As a result, library violated and in less restrained and enjoined will continue to violate section 5A and 5C of the Securities Act. What does enjoined mean? To prohibit, okay. Um, so this is what I was talking about earlier, how crypto securities are made effectively illegal by the SEC. So I think LBRY did not try to register this, their security, uh, but many other people have tried to register crypto securities and they've unanimously been declined. Um, so, um, and, but then if you don't register, then you're in violation of section 5A and 5C of the Securities Act. Um, the commission seeks a permanent injunction in joining library from engaging in the transactions, acts, practices, and course of business alleged in the complaint. And conduct-based injunctions prohibiting library from participating directly or indirectly in any unregistered digital asset securities offering. The commission also seeks disgorgement of all ill-gotten gains from the unlawful conduct set forth here together with prejudgment interests, civil penalties, and such other relief as the court may deem appropriate. Um, okay, I don't know if I need to read the rest of this. Um, This is kind of interesting. Uh, to financially support its operations and promotional efforts, Library planned to offer and sell LBC to investors. In March 2016, Library represented to the public on its website, in the early days of our protocol, Library Inc. will make a concerted effort to deploy LBC in a non-neutral way. We will be incentivizing early adopters, amazing content publishers, and even nonprofits, which share our vision of a free and open internet. We will be re retaining a a portion to finance the continued development of the ecosystem. Library credits will work on behalf of the development of the library content distribution network, not the other way around. So I'm not sure if this one, I'm, I'm not sure if I actually agree with the SEC's legal case here. Um, I think you could kind of give up tokens out to people in a way that would not be an unregistered securities offering. Um, so say you create this, um, like say you give what they're, you do what they're saying here. We will incentivize early adopters, amazing content publishers, and even nonprofits which share our vision. I think if you created a crypto commodity token, I think you could just give it to people um, who are like active in your ecosystem. Um, I don't think you could sell it to them if they expect to make pro a profit. But if you want to just like give out tokens to people who are helpful for your project, I, I, I don't think that would be a... Um, a securities transaction. Because uh, I think one of the tests of the Howey test was like in exchange for money. Um, so if you gave them to people, the people then could sell them on secondary markets. But uh, um, as long as you weren't like, as the creator of the project selling them, I think you'd be fine. Um, Oh, I think they're describing the how, uh, how we test here. Um, so step one, or point one, investment contracts, first prong, LBC holders invested money. Uh, they sold LBC 
to institutional investors and retail investors in exchange for U.S. dollars, Bitcoin, and other considerations? So I would say yes. Uh, investment contract, second prong. LBC holders invested in a common enterprise. Um, this one's maybe actually a little weaker, but let's see. I'll be... Uh... So yeah, I mean, the success of the enterprise depended on LBRYs built out of the network, and the value of LBC rose and fell for each LBC holder in the same manner. Um, so yeah, it did kind of just act like a corporation issuing equity. Um, they expected profit. Yeah, they were expecting it to appreciate. Um, okay. Okay, um, that was interesting. That was very readable too. So let's see, this is the press release. So Gary Gensler is the current chair of the uh, SEC. Um, and so he would have been the one that brought this suit. I wonder how the token's doing. LBC crypto oh. market cap. This is cool. You can view crypto prices directly in Brave. Um, so this is when they were first issuing them. Um, so this is kind of the main place the suit takes place during and then afterwards oh, let's get another graph um, so 0. 0.004 US dollars per token so it was like one cent in like 2020 and then the crypto bull run it goes all the way up to like 25 cents and then it was four cents and then oh so it's it's like lost like 10x so i think they lost the suit when did they lose the suit um so they lost the suit like the end of 2022 um so that'd be like here so like after the crypto crash in 2021 it was still like four cents then they lost the suit it goes down to like one cent and then this last year, it's declined further to like half a cent. Um, what's the market cap? Um, market cap is $3 million. Interesting, okay. Um, Oh, I should also add, I want to add that to my notes. Um, what? Are you not allowed to download a PDF from the SEC?
Okay. Um. So this is LBRY's Twitter. I guess this is LBRY.com. So I, I, I think the distinction may be actually there are three entities. There's LBRY.com, which is LBRY Inc. from the SEC lawsuit. And then there's LBRY.org, which is a nonprofit that I think is still around and is maintaining the LBRY like open source project. And then there's Odyssey, which is one, the biggest among potentially many companies building on top of um, LBRY, uh, the network. Um, So I was looking for, do they have, um, so, so my understanding is that uh, the LB, uh, Odyssey is currently being auctioned off to settle the SEC suit. Um, what I'm most interested in is the open source technology and the blockchain. Um, so although the people that created this violated securities law, now that it's out there, it's totally legal for Americans to use if they want. Um, so you could mine LBRY, you could post content on the LBRY network, you could build some sort of app to access LBRY. Um, and so that was what I'm planning to do for the second half of the stream, is kind of look into the tech and see how usable that is. Um, so yeah. Uh, the the uh, the SEC won the case, and I believe like LBRY.com is now like bankrupt and uh, yeah, auctioning off assets. Um, I'm a little confused on exact. Oh, here it is. Here's here's the tweet I was looking for. Okay, LBRY Inc. is winding down. The LBRY network is unaffected. Odyssey and other assets will undergo legal process to satisfy debt. I saw another tweet. I believe the end of 2023 this was being auctioned off. So it's unclear if it was sold or it's still being auctioned off, but Odyssey um, is being sold off. Um, Okay. Um, they kind of did do an ICO. Um, I don't know if this is really correct. Okay, um, so now let's look at the tech. So, LBRY IO, is this like the, I wanna find like LBRY.org's GitHub. Um, oh no, they, I, I already looked here, they don't have anything. Um, okay, so I guess LBRY IO is the GitHub for most of this code. Um, so let's download some of this. Um, so I think I've run this before. Uh, maybe I'll do it again on stream. Um, but they have a desktop app that you can use. Um, so you will just, I think, connect to the blockchain directly, and then you can BitTorrent the videos. You can find the videos you want to watch, and then you can BitTorrent them, save them locally. Um, I can also show you, I made a video about using the Android app. Um, so I'll go to Argus Open Tech. Um, so this is my website. And then on the bottom here, I have my social links. Uh, please follow me. And here's my Odyssey channel. Um, so 
I made this video a while ago uh, demoing the Android app. Uh, the Android app is actually quite good. Um, well, I wouldn't say quite good, totally usable. Um, and I think if you're looking for an easy way to help the library network now, I think the best thing you could do would be to download the Android app or the desktop app and just see the content. Because uh, bandwidth is very expensive um, and it sounds like the people running the project are totally bankrupt. Um, but if you see the content like on your phone while you're asleep at night, uh, when you're not using your bandwidth, it doesn't cost you anything and it kind of helps the whole network. Um, so if you want to use the LBRY blockchain directly, there's an Android app and a Linux desktop app. Um, and I assume this also runs in like Windows and such. Uh, okay, so maybe I'll try building this or something, uh, but let's, let's look at the other code first. Um, so the SDK. This is written in Python, nice. Oh, neat. They implement uh, distributed hash tables. Oh, and they rewrote and go. That's impressive. Oh, that's cool. I think this site is down, uh, so this would be a good thing to archive. Um, BRY.tech. Um, 
what is this written in? Oh, it's like JavaScript. All right. I probably don't know how to run this then, uh, but I can archive it. Um, how do I do this? A B C D. Okay, so I've arch archived their code um, for what that's worth. And then maybe a good thing to do on stream would be to try to run the, uh, the desktop app. Um, yes. So I'm going to guess the SDK is a little harder to run than uh, the desktop app. And there's probably less to see, too. Um, yeah, so let's run the desktop app. Um, okay, so this is going to run the library daemon, and then Electron is like a, it's like, does the app in JavaScript. Um, what are some source contributing? Okay. Debian based. Um, yes.
Um, so I'm on Linux Mint, which is a Debian-based Linux distribution. So I can install this uh, .deb. Uh, um, it's in the Arch user repo, Flathub. Okay, neat. Um, so yeah, it seems like the desktop app is actually pretty pretty straightforward to run. Uh, so I'm not going to bother trying to build this. Uh, I really don't like working with like JavaScript Electron apps, um, but a .deb is perfect. So I think I can do dpackage install lbry.deb sudo. Okay. Let's see if we can use a large language model to figure this out. Whenever I see this apt fix broken install, it normally means that things aren't uh, aren't going well. Um, okay. So that is what I just tried. Um, All right, let's just try it. Apt fix. This wasn't helpful at all. This just like read back to me. I mean, maybe maybe that is the correct answer. Um, can install apps fix broken. So let's try again. Oh, it worked. Or it's already installed. Okay. I still don't really understand what this is doing. Like, was it installed or was it like, uh, was the dependency the wrong version and had to like uninstall and reinstall something? Uh, but it looks like it worked. Sweet. So LBRY add to panel. Okay, so here we go. The LBRY desktop app seems pretty uh, pretty straightforward to run. Um, I went, so it says the wallet server took 
longer than expected to respond. I wonder if the wallet server is down. Um, I think it would be pretty valuable to have some people really look into this project. Uh, cause it, it, it's very cool tech, um, and it seems like they mostly did things well, but it didn't. It hasn't. It didn't quite get to the point where it could kind of sustain itself, uh, which is kind of community running things um, before the SEC lawsuit. So, um, okay. So it looks like maybe the conclusion is that the desktop wallet is no longer functional. I I did run this like a year or two ago, so this this did once work, um, but not now. Um, okay. So what else can we look at? Odyssey still seems to clearly work, though I guess it's being auctioned off, so who knows. Um, so let's just look at the code itself. Um, maybe we'll find some interesting stuff, and then it's, it's already been, I think, the better part of an hour or so, so I'll probably call it after that. So this is the, actually the docs might be the most useful thing to look at. Let's see what's going on there. Um, so the docs are my T license. If you know Node, It'd be an awesome project to just rehost the library docs because this library.txt site is now down. Um, but it looks like you can just npm. Um, maybe I wonder if I can just try this. It doesn't even. I'm I'm very much not a uh, a JavaScript expert, but um, uh, let's see. Get npm. So I think npm is like the pip of JavaScript. So I wonder if this has, oh, documents. Um, oh, that's kind of neat. It looks like maybe they're like parsing the markdown into, into a JavaScript page. Um, is this uh, link still valid? Okay, so this is not used anymore. Um, so maybe I don't even need to run the NPM. I can just read these markdown files. I probably actually prefer that. Um, so it's proof of work, which makes sense since it was uh, forked from Bitcoin. Oh, they use a different hash function. Because um, Bitcoin is SHA-256. They do SHA-512 of 256 of 256. So I guess maybe that's more secure. Um, oh, interesting. So I bet this is actually harder to crack than the uh, Bitcoin hash function. So they, they take the data they SHA-256 it, they SHA-256 it again, then they SHA-512 it, and then they split it in half, and then 
do ripe MD160, which I've never heard of, but it's presumably another hash algorithm. They hash both ha sides independently through there. Then they add the hashes of those together, SHA-256, SHA-256. Um, <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know much about, uh, about like encryption and such, but if I, uh, if I were doing things, I would do something a lot like this, where you just like, you t because I think they can kind of crack SHA-256, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I would just kind of like keep, keep doing a bunch of things and just make it like totally unworkable for someone to unhash all of this. Um, okay, neat. P2, I, I looked into trying to do P2P seeding a while ago, and um, that was actually why I made that video of the Android app. I found it was just totally impossible to like peer to peer like because I wanted to just like contribute bandwidth to the network, um, and I found it was just not possible. Um, so maybe this uh, maybe this talk will help. Um, so be careful with seeding stuff. Um, it'll be connect just like BitTorrent. It'll be connected to your public IP, uh, so know what you're getting into. Or like only seed content you're okay with being associated with your public IP. Um, okay, so I don't still really don't understand how to actually seed. Um, See if uh, Node is working now. Um, okay. CD LPRY tech is npm i just install npm i. I don't know if these warnings are actually bad or not. Uh, I like that it's all marked down though, so I can still like read the content here. Um, what else looks interesting? Build.md. So it looks like this failed. Okay. Um, these docs actually didn't seem all that helpful either. So let's look at the code of the... Um, was this the like implementation, re-implementation in... Uh, 
in uh, I forget. Okay, um, so the, S the SDK would be a good thing to look at. So let's look at that. This is cool. I'm glad they use BitTorrent. Um, I for a while I was getting really excited about uh, Filecoin and IPFS, but I've I've looked pretty deeply at uh, some of their code and like tried to run different things, and it's really not production ready code. Like it's it's a uh, IPFS is like a science project, um, but BitTorrent works and has worked for decades, and will continue to work for decades probably. So. Um, this is cool. So did they implement the BitTorrent protocol themselves or are they using a library? Um, this kind of looks cool, though. Maybe they're using, it, it says libtorrent, so maybe uh, they're using that. Um, I think the, the distributed hash tables were the coolest thing from, uh, f from uh, Filecoin and I think, or uh, IPFS. And I think they've added them to um, they've added them to BitTorrent 2.0 now. So that was like the main draw of IPFS for me. Um, which actually, I think I have a I have a video on my Odyssey and YouTube channel explaining this. If you're interested, um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here, technical explanation of IPFS. Um, one of the things I love about, I, mean, I think this is just because it's open source, but the the Odyssey, Odyssey is slower than YouTube, but it's like way more user friendly. Um, like the ads are less intrusive. And my favorite feature, you can just download things, which is like such a like user friendly, like pro decentralization open source feature that's just missing from like literally every single mainstream social network. Um, so, um, so yeah, if you're interested in distributed hash tables, I talk about them in this video here. Um, it's also on YouTube. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to end the stream in a minute, but um, I think the takeaway here is that the project's kind of in, the library project's kind of in flux right now. 
Um, you mostly can't run the open source code yourself, but it seems like they did a lot of cool work and it's close. So like maybe if someone like spun up a new, I don't know, wallet server and doc server and you got a few things like that going, it might kind of become like a viable open source project. Um, but I think right now things are kind of on hold with the bankruptcy and how that all sorts out. Um, I think probably the best thing that could happen to the project would be to have someone with a few million dollars buy Odyssey or um, I guess you can't buy, I don't know if you could buy Library Incorporated out of bankruptcy, um, but it does seem like the project still kind of needs some like central governance to keep it going. Um, but this, this code seems very high quality. Um, so it's definitely a cool and promising open source project. Thanks for watching.